Did somebody say merchandise? You heard it here first, folks. We now have merchandise. This is not a drill. I've been working pretty hard to get an Etsy shop set up for the last couple of months now. And I'm finally in a comfortable position to get an Etsy shop done. So as you can see, we've got a lot of Slipknot shit for people that like Slipknot shit. You know, emos and all that. You know, so my kind of people. We've got a couple of Dragon Ball stuff because I'm a Dragon Ball artist at the end of the day. Right now, of course, it's only limited to these 17 products. You know, the original Slipknot 9, a couple of Dragon Ball things I've done. Uh, a few shirts, but this is going to expand in due time, don't you worry, it'd be nice if we can actually get some things going, some things sold, and I will of course be taking merch recommendations on Twitter, be sure to follow me there, uh, and all that good stuff, so yeah, please check out the link in the description, it will mean the world to me, it would help to support me and we can get this channel e growing even more than we already have done. Of course, being a Preston Open channel, this does mean there will be PNE merch on this shop eventually, whether that be t-shirts, posters, hats, keychains, boxes, fucking sliders for your feet, whatever that may be. There will be some form of PE merch on there very soon, and the shop is going to be updated almost weekly. So be sure to keep an eye out on that. Thank you all once more. If you have any concerns, any whatever else like that, please be sure to contact me. Link in the description. Get it all clicked. Uh, please, it would mean the world. Uh, and thank you. I will uh, let the video roll on. Alright folks, the transfer news really is coming thick and fast because we have another new signing already. Within the space of what, two days, PE have signed two players. Uh, it's crazy, absolutely fucking crazy. Never never in a million years would the current climate of PE fans have thunk it. But anyways, as you may know, it's Liam Delap, Delap, however you say his surname. Um, I woke up this morning about 7, 8 o'clock and I saw something on, on my timeline regarding this lad saying he's been recalled from Stoke and he's due to come here. And this was a rumour that was going around this morning because it came from the Telegraph, I think it was the Telegraph anyways. And I've, I was a bit like, mm, take, take it with a, you know, a grain of salt. But, yeah, no, uh, he's here. He, and, and they announced him just a moment ago, uh, our new number seven from Manchester City. That's pretty cool. So let's have a look at what he's saying, shall we? And uh, let's discuss what this actually means for us. Alright, so speaking after signing, Liam said, I'm buzzing. It's such a great club and I'm really excited to meet the boys and play in front of the fans. Good lad. I've spoken to the manager, I'm really happy with what he's got to say and the style of football he plays, so I can't wait to get under him. No, that sounds very gay. I can't wait to get playing under him. I like to skip words, you see, because it speeds things up. As a striker at the end of the day, the manager wants goals, so that's what he said to me. I trust myself in front of goal, I trust myself to get in the right position, so if I get the opportunity then hopefully I can bring that. The teenager joined parent Club City from Derby County in July 2019 and his first professional contract followed a year later. Cool. Manager Ryan Law added, Liam was one we targeted in the summer because of the work he'd done at City's under-23s and he had some input in the first team with a couple of goals too. With him being called back now, we felt it was important to make our move and I'm very pleased we've got it over the line. We got it over the line pretty fast then. He's a good lad, a good footballer and a good goal scorer. He just needs an opportunity to score goals and hopefully that's what we can provide him. Obviously we're going to be without a meal for a period of time now, so we felt we need to bring an extra body in the building to continue the form we've had. Yeah, that's fair enough and I can see where he's coming from. Alright, so if we take a look at Delap's stats really quickly, a lot of people are saying he hasn't exactly hit the ground running, and while this is true, I don't think it's exactly fair. Um, am I covering this? No, plenty is best. So in Stoke this year, because obviously he's been at Stoke for the, since the start of the season, he had played 22 games and only scored 3, and this is what's concerning people. But when you think about it, I need to move this mic a bit closer actually, it's a bit far away. What you need to think about is, if you look at the Stoke setup at the minute, Obviously, it's not, it's not perfect. Uh, if we just go to Stoke City on Goggle, and we look at them, the 18th on the table, that's already a big red flag. But of course, this table's that tight knit. We can't exactly say it's a good or a bad thing. You know, there's that like whatever else. But in terms of the the way they set up and the way they play, it's not brilliant. Let's be honest. So recalling him from Stoke 
is the only good thing that um, City could have done for this lad's development. Let's not forget he's 19, he's only a, he's a young one. But if we look at his City under 23 stats, he played 10 matches with 8 goals, 20 matches with 24 goals, but and then this one it was only 2 matches, no goals. We can't exactly count that too much, but he had an assist at least. 4 assists, 2 assists. This guy's another one that scores a lot of goals. Uh, and even Man City's first team, of course, he's only played one match. That was last year. He's not. He, he's only scored in the EFL Cup, which was two years ago. Uh, for under 21, he didn't do too well. Under 18, he did decently well in the 19-20 uh, season. And if we go back to your uh, UEFA Youth League, two matches, no goals, of course, fair enough. Uh, but that, this is what we mainly need to be looking at in the PL2 Division One. That this is what we're going to be drawing a lot of the young players from, because as you can see, this um, last season, sorry. 10 matches, 8 goals, 2 assists. 20 matches, 24 goals and 4 assists. That's that's the big one. And that's why he said we wanted to get this over the line in the summer, but of course Stoke took him. Um, so this guy does score a lot of goals. He's just not hit the ground running with Stoke simply because Stoke probably didn't work for him. If we can work for Delap, Delap will work for us. It's as simple as that. That's the whole. That, that's why we brought this lad in because we need him to work with us. And that's why we brought on a few other lads in as well because, again, they can work with us and we can work with them for their development and for our um, success. That's what it's all about. That's what a loan spell is about. However, as good as this news is, uh, you know, good old Delap joining us, there's a, there is a problem. Um, and that is what's going to happen with the rest of the squad because, of course, Tom Cannon's brought in now to go up front with Chad Evans. That, that was the main... That was the... Um, that is what people are thinking. Can we, it's like a lineup creator website. All right, this is a rough overview of what we normally have in terms of our lineup. Of course, we'll put Woodman in there. Like that, that's not going to change, but it's just nice to be there. Um, okay, so this is what the rough lineup was around the start of the season to now. Of course, these players are interchangeable: Alvaro, Brady, Brown, Potts, McCann, Woodburn, Woodburn potentially up top instead of Reese instead. So let's put uh, Reese slash Woodburn. Uh, but now this is the dilemma. We've also got Parrot, so we could also put Troy here. And this is what it was. However, now we've got Cannon. So let's just assume we've got Cannon here up front with Evans. Okay, we'll move these apart so we've got space to type names. So we've got Cannon and Evans up front. But now we've got Delap in the picture. And he's bound to be playing here. So we've got three strike and um, Maguire as well, actually. Let's just put Maguire in for... Actually, no, we'll put, we'll put Shawnee here. Uh, let's put Sean Maguire. Okay. So that's what we've roughly had. Okay, Reese swappable with Maguire, Evans swappable with Parrot. But now we've got Dilap and Cannon. Um, well, I'll take Woodburn off here, actually, because that, I think that's only been a temporary thing. So we've had three options up front for each player in terms of our two strikers. But the problem is, Evans at the start of the season hadn't hit the ground running. He got sent off in the game he fucking came on. Um, Troy's been injured for a long time. And Reese is now injured. Uh, but otherwise would start most games. And Maguire has been injured, got back to fitness, and is injured again. And that's where we stand. And that's why this signing is important, but at the same time it concerns me. Because now that we have Evans in form, and we've got Troy, Troy, we've got uh, Tom Cannon up front with Evans, what's going to go down? That is the problem. Because now Delap can start over Evans, but Evans is in form. So would that not be a bit of a redundant thing to do? They're, going, they're bound to be playing Delap over Evans and Cannon over Reese. Well, they have to play Cannon over Reese because Reese is unable to play. So that's a, a thing that's bound to happen. So, and you know, Troy's back to fitness. There's a big problem in terms of benching and playing players here because we've got three lads on loan. We've got Man City's, um, Tottenham's, and Man United's most prized young prospects being Alvaro, um, Cannon, oh, Everton as well actually, Everton and. Um, you know, Troy. So this is, you know, it's big problems because now now there's going to be a big fight for lineup. So what if if you want my suggestion? Let's take if let's say Troy gets back in the picture because let's let's be honest, Troy is going to get back into the picture. I think we should put Troy in an attacking midfielder type position. Okay, hear me out for a minute. Let's do this. Um, this is a actually this is a bad way of displaying this. Yeah, that that, that looks a bit more like what I'm trying to say because obviously Parrot in front of goal isn't all that so he's not going to be scoring goals like Evans has been or etc so I think we should put Troy White and, and Sean Maguire around this area of the pitch and we'll keep Cannon up front with Delap up front and Evans up front however at the same time Maguire because we have three players now in contention for this spot would probably be best up here because Reese is injured and that's why 
uh, keeping Sean Maguire up top is important, even if it's not going to be played as much, it's still important because we can't have three players in contention for this this spot in the middle of the field. Um, so that, that's what I'm trying to get at here. Uh, so this this is fine with me. These are very interchangeable players. It's just the Delap and Evans debate at the minute because Evans is in complete monster of a form for us, and for him to just get benched because we've signed another attacking option is it's a bit of a shame. But Troy should be dropped back. That's my opinion and a lot of people's opinion as well. The, this is fine. This is all fine until we sign another player. If we sign another player, that right wing back will then be in contention for this spot. Brown goes back to the middle and things go a bit dicky again with other players. Um, but yeah, that's that, that's what it should be like. Yeah, obviously with this with it with this new lad. Uh, but again, uh, another problem is he's not here permanently. This is another loan signing. Another loan signing. Okay. So you know, considering we have another loan signing, when the season's finished, we will have no Delap, no Cannon, no Parrot, no Alvaro. So that's four players instantly that are gone. Um, and as far as I'm aware, there are no other ones. So four players, very influential players, that we're not going to have anymore. Preston loan end. What you know? When these loans do end, what can we do? So this is why I think this move has been made. Of course, manager said we need to be scoring goals, and I completely agree with that. But the motivation behind it is probably this is the safest way we can make a playoff push. Let's be honest. Making a, a permanent signing of this calibre right now is a bad idea. As much as people want permanent signings, it's a bad idea. Because if we're going to sign these players permanently and they're going to be with us into next season as well in the Premier League, if, 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 provided that happens, if it doesn't happen, that's a lot of wages we're going to have to pay and that, that we cannot pay simply. Um, and of course the parent club might not want that to happen, blah blah blah, whatever else is involved. But... The loan is the safest option. This is in, in, We're in a comfortable position. We're 10th on the table. There's not a lot of points separating us from playoff positions. We're never going to catch up to the top of the table. But there's not many points separating the top of the bottom of the table, however. That's where we're getting at uh, with this current conversation. So if we're going to make a playoff push, why not get in as much loan talent as possible to get us to the PL? Uh, and then when we do reach the PL, we can use that money. We can use money from other competitions because the, the, these lads are going to be able to play in the FA Cup for us, provide, uh, apart from Troy. Uh, but that's fine. These lads can play in the FA Cup, which will uh, you know give us a massive help in terms of reaching the next round in that competition. We're already out of the EFL Cup, so that doesn't matter. So that's a potential extra money there. Premier League money if that if we do get promoted, and then we can sign more players. We can potentially offer these lads a contract if that if that's going to be all right with the parent club, which I very much doubt. But It'll get, you know, it will give us, it will give us, you know, that sort of, that sort of ability to do these things. Even if we don't play the lap up front, we can put him here. Keep Troy up front, put the lap there. That everyone's swappable. This is what I mean. It's like a Lego set. We can build these players here and place them here, or we can drop them back. You know, it, it's a playground for the manager right now, and that's why it's a good thing. It's not a bad thing that we're using all these loan signings because let's be honest, instead of dropping bombs and hundreds of millions of pounds on players we don't need and players we can't afford. Why not just get him in temporarily to give us that push over the line so then we can afford those kind of players? Th that's the approach and it makes all the sense to me. It really does. But uh, yeah, Dilap, great signing. Um, that's all I've got to say really. I wanted to cover the Dilap news. It's a good job I didn't start recording sooner because I was, I was going to start recording and say he's been linked with us but as soon as I was about to start recording he got announced. So that's <laughs> it's good fortune for once. Uh, but in, yeah, I just wanted to provide the update on the Delap situation and now we have our update uh, And the other update being what we're going to do with the rest of the squad because uh, Maguire has been linked to leave the club and if he does then of course That's not an awful thing because we now have another plan in place But at the same time we could do with the extra man if Maguire is going to leave get him out in the summer uh, not now but yeah Our squad was already tidy right now. We need to focus on uh, expanding it and that's what we're doing but we need to expand it now in other areas. If we are going to make another signing, get it expanded in other areas. The midfield, right wing back, attacking midfielder, get it done. That's what needs doing. Strike, of, strike force now, finished. Don't touch it. We don't need another striker. Now we need those influential players in the middle and further back to help us make the attacking push. Because lumping the ball forward is going to get us fucking nowhere. So, yeah, that, that's, that's about it really. Very good signing. Good move uh, from Riddale and the board in general, shutting us all up, saying we need to make signings. So yeah, it's good stuff. We missed out on Archer, but what does that matter? We've now got two players in as opposed to one. Archer might cost us a bit more dosh. 
Uh, I don't know what th these lads are worth, of course, and I don't want to look into that. It's not my it's, it's not my place to cover that, and I don't want to give myself a bigger headache. But yeah, good business. Very good business. And hopefully we can get see them both make their debut on Saturday, which is um, very much around the corner. So yeah, let's keep our fingers crossed, and hopefully this will give us that push we need to try and get over the line to the playoffs. Thank you all for listening in for the update. I will keep you all updated on any other form of transfer news that comes about. If there's any speculation, I will also cover the speculation and provide my thoughts and who I think we should bring in, etc. after I've done a bit of research. Uh, but for now, this will be the last video during the week. The next video you'll get is probably next week on Monday or Tuesday uh, when I cover Norwich because uh, I'll be out at the weekend so I will not be able to make the video. Uh, so I expect the Norwich Match Day report on Monday night or Tuesday evening. Um, after, no, Tuesday afternoon, sorry. Monday night or Tuesday afternoon. Expect the Norwich video then. Uh, and by then, I've had enough time to process what's gone wrong, what's gone well, etc. How the new boys have done. So, yeah, thank you, all, thank you all once again. Appreciate the support recently. We've now passed 2,700 subscribers, which is, is, is incredible. Uh, and I appreciate it very much. So, thank you all once again. Be sure to check out the shop. Link in the description. And I will see you all very soon.